Hey everybody, and welcome back to another new and noteworthy mod review. Today we're going to take a look at two mods newly released in the Giants Mod Up for January 20th, 2021. Now today we've got a rather interesting mod. Something that has, uh, well, been kind of interesting with how the game uh, deals with crop destruction in that typically when you drive over a field that is not owned by yourself, uh, there is no crop destruction. But if you drive on a field with crop destruction turned on that you own, there is crop destruction. Well, that has now been solved. With the player pays for crop destruction mod, now if you drive over a field owned by an AI player, an NPC if you will, then you'll be charged crop destruction as a result. So no more shortcuts through AI owned fields in order to get to your own field. Let's take a look at it in the Mod Hub. So we don't have a lot of information here on the Mod Hub. Basically, it just introduces a penalty for destroying NPC crops. As, as this is a script, it is available for PC only. Take a look at the screenshots. We can see that we get a penalty if we drive on seeded ground, as well as if we drive on cut grass. Interesting enough. Now, in the mod, there is an XML file that does define different forms of penalties for different difficulty settings, as well as different crops and different growth stages within the crops. So let's take a look at that. So here's an XML straight from the mod, and you can see at the top there, we have three different pricing structures depending on your economic difficulty. We have hard, based at one and a half, normal at 1.0, and easy at 0.75. Now, how does that get calculated in? Not really sure. But what we do know, obviously, from this is if you play on easy, you're going to get less of a penalty than if you play on hard. Pretty straightforward. Now, if we take a look here at the table that is below, we can see that we have penalty is calculated by the area I guess the area being destroyed, times the base value, which is going to be the difficulty, I believe, or crop base value. That's where it's, I'm not really sure how this is coming into play. So we have the area times the base times the maturity coefficient, if not harvested. Or we have the penalty times the area times the harvested coefficient. Then the average yield, yield is divided by the hectares uh, for the maturity coefficient. Basically, yeah, a whole bunch of math is going on here. And I'm not good with math. So let's not try to explain what I'm not good at. What we can see, uh, you're not penalized, apparently, for driving over dry grass. Great. Or penalized for driving over grass. If it is harvested, not so much. If it is young grass, a little bit. If it's mature grass, half of, I think, the base value somehow affected by your difficulty. So we have a pretty high base value for potatoes, pretty high base value for sugar beets, and a pretty high base value for maize. Uh, but then we have a pretty low base value for things like sunflowers, canola, Oats isn't too terrible bad, but you can see we've got mature, different values based on different crops, young, different values based on different crops, and harvested, different values based on different crops. Now let's see this thing in action. So I've got a young field of corn here, owned by Sir Philip Elder, not owned by me. Got a pickup, well, not a pickup, but a Tatra. It's got a big trailer. Jump in that. And let's drive through the field. Destroy some crops. So you can see crops destroyed, and then we have a penalty. Back up. Get out of here. Get out of here. Oh my gosh. We're racking up the penalty. And if we look at our money at the top, it's going to be going down also. So that was on hard. Let's go to easy. 
probably do the same thing. I don't remember what the value is. I wasn't paying attention. Um, but I think we were charged less on easy than we are on hard. Uh, let's go back to hard. Now, let's go in here and change this to ready to harvest corn. So now our corn is ready to harvest. Do the same thing. And we are definitely getting charged more or ready to harvest corn than we were on immature corn. Let's go to something like barley. We have growing barley. And we're being penalized. A little bit, not a whole lot. And we'll do one more. We'll go to barley in a ready to harvest state. One thirty five it said. There we go. Two twenty two. So roughly roughly the same amount of destroyed crop in and out on all of those tests. So yeah. So now if you install this mod, again. This mod isn't for everybody. You don't have to play with this mod. I don't need to see angry comments about how this mod sucks and how you're never going to use it. Well, then fine. Don't put it in. Straight up. Don't put it in. You don't have to. If you feel compelled to install every mod that's out there, well, then maybe you're compelled to install every mod out there. Well, you don't have to use it. But for some folks, they want to have that little bit of discouragement for taking shortcuts. I think it's great. I don't know if I'm going to use it, but I think it's great. So that is the um, Payer Plays for Crop Destruction mod. Now we're going to transition straight on to our second mod of interest today, and that is Root Crop Storage. Now typically this mod wouldn't make new and noteworthy, except one, it's for storing your root crops, your sugar beets, and your potatoes. We don't really have too many silo buildings set up to accept sugar beets and potatoes in a realistic fashion. Let's add that qualifier to it. There are some, but they're not a lot. Um, so here we go. This does not require global company. It just works right out of the box. Uh, it's available for all platforms, even better. And given Giant's announcement just yesterday, about the potato DLC. Well, this seems to slot right on in there with some interest for uh, for what's coming next week. So in this bay, we have our dump station for our sugar beets and or potatoes. Then on the other side of the building, we have our fill trigger. And I have to say, this mod is really nice looking. Really nice looking wood and brick. Door slide really nice. There we have our conveyor belt for our fill station. So let's go ahead and take a look at this thing in the mod hub. So this building is used to store potatoes and beets. This building works like a silo, but for root crops. $50,000 to buy, 300,000 storage capacity. $50 per day. Look at that, people. Cave modding. Man, you are the man. 14 slots on console. Now, that is probably a guesstimate based on the testing tool that Giants has provided to um, modders. But still, you get a general idea of how many slot counts we got going on here. Uh, shop is available on our silo. Season's ready. Sliding gates, interior lighting, and obviously an interior. So let's see this thing in action. Go ahead and load this truck up with potatoes. We have 59,000 liters of potatoes.
I'm gonna hit the light switch while we were waiting. And then we'll come over here to the output. Sugar beets, potatoes, and we get a little bit of an animation. Wow, that's fast, but we do get a bit of animation. I was wondering if we were going to get an animation on the unload belt or not, but we do get some animation there. Pretty nice. A little fast for my personal taste, but still. Oh, there it is. That's it. Pretty straightforward. We have, once again... Pay, player pays for crop destruction as well as root crop storage both mods are available over at the Giants Mod Hub uh, the former is for PC only the latter is for all consoles or all platforms let me know in the comments what do you think of both of these mods and until next time happy farming be sure to like subscribe and click that notification bell